Hi everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Terry Haddad, Vice President of Community Initiatives at Community Services for Children. Welcome to the Parent Project Podcast. This work stems from our vision for an engaged community where every child thrives and every family succeeds. CSC has been serving families for over 50 years, and we know that parenting can be hard. We're inviting local doctors, teachers, counselors, social workers, and other experts to provide perspectives to help parents maneuver the sometimes challenging role of parenting. It's great to have Mike Daniels. Thanks for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, Mike Daniels is a semi-retired social worker who has spent his entire career learning about our youth, helping children, teens, and families live safer and more productive lives. For the last 25 years, Mike has specialized in attachment and helping foster and adopted youth and families learn to live in each other's world safely, if not always respectfully. He is the father of two and a proud new grandfather. So, Mike... What kind of uh, advice do you have for welcoming your baby in the first three months? Oh, goodness. I think the most important thing that new parents should know is that we spend nine plus months learning to love our baby. And our babies are experiencing nothing but comfort in the womb. They're not experiencing love. They're experiencing comfort, and that's different. So when they're born... Immediately, babies cry, and generally they are given to mom, and they are soothed. That's the beginning of that connection and the beginning of teaching our baby to love us because love ultimately is a physical experience. And when babies are born, that's all they have is physical experience, comfort or distress. When an infant is cold, tired, lonely, hungry, they feel distressed, and their only thing to do is cry. And so what is the, what is the best way to give a baby comfort and love? Consistently responding. When the baby needs you, the baby needs you. And for most of us, especially new moms, as I have a daughter who's a new mom, um, they spend all of their time with the baby. So it's very easy. Again, parenting is not difficult. It's just complicated. And I think I heard you say once that you can't spoil an infant. What does that mean exactly? Correct. Um, Over the years, I've had questions about How long should we let babies cry before we go and check on them in the night? And my answer has always been, if the baby is under a year old and they are crying, go check immediately. Because you're not going to spoil the baby and teach the baby that, oh, mommy's going to be at every beck and call. Because they're not thinking about that. They're responding to the fact that there's something wrong. It might not be big, but it might be you know, cold, tired, hungry, and we need to respond to it because that is part of the soothing process. And what does that have to do in terms of attachment? When we experience distress, and many adults have stress in their lives, um, think about a car backfiring and we jump. Okay, as soon as we realize it was a car backfiring, there's a sense of relief. Okay, when a baby's born, everything they experience cold, tired, hungry, lonely is a physical experience of distress. So when they're comforted, they relax and experience that relief. And that experience of relief is the building block of connection and attachment. Got it. And so I love that. Consistently respond. And so what should a parent do when uh, it, the baby's crying and whatever response is not working? What do they do? How do they take care of themselves and not? In the moment, that's a very difficult thing to answer. Because when a baby is not soothed, especially a colicky baby, as we have all heard about, um, it is stressful. 
Um, so I think it's very important that parents, especially new parents, take care of themselves from the beginning. Now they've had a baby, they've had nine months to prepare and learn and, and love. And now it's time to learn how to love yourself as well, because as they tell us on the airplane, put your oxygen mask on first so you can help others. Take care of yourself so you can be the best for your baby. Very nice. Uh, what else happens in the first three months? We know we need consistent responding. We know parents need to take care of themselves. What else? So much is, is going on. I mean, the growth rate of just the human body at that point um, is immense. And babies are starting to, to learn to manipulate their fingers and, and what it feels like to put their thumbs or their toes in their mouth. And it's important that parents watch and learn. Not correct, because babies do not need correction ever. <laughs> and as we learn, we follow their routine. Then we start to teach them our routine as they get older, but that's down the road because the first year of life is the their routine. Any other early issues for those first several months that you've encountered in your practice? I think an important thing for new parents to, to keep in mind is that as you're watching and learning about your baby and teaching your baby to love you, if you notice things that seem inconsistent or concerning, certainly contact your pediatrician. Uh, immediately and, and and understand that babies all grow and learn at different rates so seeing something for example um i've had a lot of questions about speaking oh my child isn't speaking yet he's two and a half he's still mumbling In some cases i find out that parents are speaking baby talk to the baby and baby's got no interest in speaking anything but what he's hearing. So speak normally to the baby. We can speak sing song to infants. Absolutely. We can speak. I still speak sing song to children sometimes. Um, but it's important to speak as, you know, speak in kind of, I don't want to say adult language, but teachable language. Thank you. I have another question. This is, my, this is a hard one. What happens when mom doesn't feel right in the first three months? That is more common than we might think. Um, unfortunately, many moms feel they have to suck it up, whether their moms did or their grandmoms did, and that gets passed down. We live in a very different world. The world today is so challenging. Uh, so for moms who don't feel well, again, first it's self-care. And after your baby's born, there may be an increase in melancholy feelings. Yeah. Um, the postpartum depression, it doesn't have to reach that, but certainly the postpartum blues. When parents prepare for their birth, learning that, hey, I'm going to teach this baby to love me. During that process, they're going to feel some sense of distress somewhere, whether it's the anticipation of the birth, what am I going to do as a parent, whatever happens. And that's when to start seeking some support and, if necessary, some professional help. Very good. Well, Mike, this has been a fabulous uh, advice for, for parents. Anything else you want to leave our, our listeners with? Um, I would just like to say thank you for having me. And uh, again, the importance of just recognizing that we cannot spoil an infant. Love it. We can't spoil an infant. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for listening. To learn more about the Parenting Project podcast, Project Child, or Community Services for Children, please visit csceinc.org.